If you knew me right from when I was a child, I've always been a church rat, even without really, really gaining salvation. When I received officially, like for real, receiving the life of Christ that I understood was when I was 18 years old. But prior to that, I was born and raised in the north, you know, going to church every Sunday, every Thursday, every Tuesday. And um, so I, I literally, basically just grew up around the church environment. And I just loved the things of the church. It was when I clocked 18 that I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit that that I came to truly receiving the life of Christ. And ever since then, I've always loved the Lord to work with me, use me. Why are you using this person? You're using that person, people younger than me, and you're not using me. You want to clock about one or two times, sometimes off and on, this feeling comes back, God, use me, use me, use me. And like I earlier explained, when I first started the first video, I told us why the Lord was bringing me, was letting me to share this with us in this month of June. I come to find out that there are reasons that are just things God can just let go like that this is one of the reasons why he is not using you yet but that doesn't mean he's not going to use you he is going to use when you are ripe so how will you know if you're ripe so in this video i'll be talking about five reasons why god is not using you yet mm -hmm. beauties we meet again welcome back to my channel it's nalo ifoma the king's bride so from the title below you see the, what we're talking about today is why god five reasons why god is not using you yet the first reason is you are still unsurrendered you are still very alive so much alive in the flesh you want your will to be done and not god's will to be done you've not gotten to that place of total absolute surrender i know most times we sing this song ah, i surrender oh and even the song by what was his name what was his name again no he said um withholding nothing i surrender all to you we sing all these songs but when god comes to touch our money you <laughs> like hello jesus you just stay there first okay when god comes to touch our marriage like hello god please this is the man i want to marry you are telling me you're telling me he's not the one father can you convert him to be my husband you know when it comes to your career or when it comes to relocation you know there are so many things it is very easy for us to sing this song in church and even cry become so emotional and cry and still god is not using us because we are not surrendered yet you have to come to a point where you lose the ability to say no to god have to come to a point where even if you're gonna cry even if you're gonna, it's gonna cost you something just let it go solomon told god that he's not gonna he's not gonna give him something that, that doesn't cost him anything you know when we talk about titan offerings when you, if you still have problems with titan offerings and anything that has to do with finances um regarding the church it's still a very is a huge sign that you are still unsurrendered when it has to do with you parting with your money second reason is that you need to grow spiritually and in other areas else you will make a mess of the treasure god is going to give you see god god values anything he gives he's not a waster that's why he gives to each of us according to me the measure of grace he gives to us our, according to what we can handle talent he gives to some five here yeah? gives some three and two every one uh -huh. and one he gave one went and hid it he buried it he didn't do nothing and he was just there complaining about the church what the church is not doing right what this person is not doing right and he's not working on him his his own gift the one whom god gave five doubled it the one whom god gave three or two doubled it also so in order for god to really really use you to the nation take it to the nations and really use you and not be ashamed or even regret using you you need to grow you can't just hand over ten thousand dollars to a child of five years you know the, the child is just going to discard the money just play with it even tear it because he or she does not know the value yes god does not put his values his deep mysterious secrets to anyhow person you have to press into god you have to come to a point where you have totally surrendered your life to god that you lose the ability to tell god no which must have come from a place of you studying the scriptures praying giving your life to christ and desiring and practicing not just desiring practicing to do that which god said you should do god gave you a hundred dollars for example 
example, and you can't pay your tithe of $10. And you're like, ah, no, God, when I have the big one, I'll pay. It's a lie, my darling. When you have the big one, you'll be like, how can God give me a million dollars? I'm going to give God a 10% of a million dollars. If when you check it, or let, let me not just even go to dollars. Let me just use Naira that most of us are very conversant with. God gave you 10,000 Naira. Maybe 10,000 Naira was your profit from your business, or 10,000 Naira was um, something you that you needed to tithe from. And you'll be like, I can't go to I can't give God 1,000. If 1,000 is so hard for you to give to God as a tithe and you can't really raise your offerings to God, not to man, and you're still having this mindset that um, it is man that I'm giving it to and not to God, you are still not ready to do business with God. There's no way God is going to entrust you with millions of naira because he knows you're still not going to pay your tithe. He knows you're still not going to offer. He knows you're still not going to help people. He knows you're still not going to help your family or even um, bless your parents so you need to grow in that area the throne is not a place for practice you have to learn first go to that cave of Adulam. learn first get yourself grounded so that when you come out when god announces you and gives you visibility the visibility and the fame that you've always craved for you will not make a mess out of it you will not make god regret why he put you in that place in the first place number three is god searches our motive apart from we singing praise and dancing in the church what do you do in the sacred place god search our motive something the bible said in the book of jeremiah chapter 17 verse 10 he said but i the lord search all hearts and examine secret motives i give people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve so when you are coming to god and be like father use me i want you to use me and you feel like god is not using it yet check your motive something is not really pure about your motive why do you do what you do why do you want god to use what is the sincere motive underneath the sleeves why you really want god to use you and if the reason is not to reveal jesus and glorify him or if the reason is not to impact into life selflessly if the reason is just to portray yourself and to show your cosmic that you have arrived or to show your village people that you have made it or to tell people that even children of god can be influential that alone is a wrong motive and god is not ready to work with prideful people because it's going to get to a point where you no longer need him when you start getting the fame the visibility you want the money the power you want you start walking into offices and rooms your qualifications can't take you to you will forget the lord your god this was one of the things that happened to solomon god gave him immense wisdom that no one has, has ever had such and he had money he had everything he has fame he has wealth he has women what happened he went and started marrying from countries where the lord forbade him to so when god gets you to those places and your motive is not pure you are going to ruin it then number four is maybe your sin maybe you have an addiction um that's a secret sin that you are yet to let go and if god uses you at like that just at that your raw state you are going to bring shame to yourself to the name of the lord and to christianity as a lifestyle you're going to bring shame and you're going to make you the hidden reason you're even going to cause some people to backslide let's say for example you have a habit of respectfully speaking you have a habit of let's say pornography and you can't control it and you still come on the pulpit and you preach and at the end of it or you still go back to you still crawl back into that one day one of your members is going to find that out or one day you're going to forget and leave your phone and they're going to see it or when something's going to happen and you get exposed or maybe you are a minister and you hit your wife Abba. maybe you hit your wife and on how do you feel that you come to church on sunday and you're preaching there's a bit of energy i'm praising the and your wife is sitting down somewhere way and i might be like who are you really like who are you in the church and who are you at home you're, you're you are two different people and the time is going to come that if that woman is tired when women are tired we are tired we can go we can get crazy <laughs> no one that ever said something that um it's better to hide somewhere in the desert than live with a nagging woman so women are not born as nag something pushed them to become like that just look out for one of my videos where i talked about five reasons why women find it hard to submit just do not do not skip that video if you have secret sins it is better you just withdraw and let god really break you let god really help you overcome it so that you can come back to office else you're going to make a mess out of what god will give you which he will not even give you in the first place because he knows you're going to make a mess of it the fifth reason before i say the fifth one please subscribe let me know your thoughts in the comment section still i'm not all bank of wisdom still i want to still glean from your own well i also want to glean from your own wisdom i want to draw from your own, your own wealth of wisdom let me know your thoughts in the comment section what are other reasons do you think why god does not use people the fifth thing 
is probably because that is not your calling a lot of persons want to go and mount the pulpits when the pulpit is not your calling the pulpits my own pulpits i must tell you is been here with you on youtube and sharing these knowledge there are people who are called on the physical pulpits there are people who are called in that very various industries so your own pulpit might be at school your own pulpit might be in your office your own pulpit might pulpit might be at your place of work your own pulpit might even be in your home because when you got married start with your family start with your husband before the children start coming and when the children start coming you start your ministry you continue your ministry that even before you start going out there what you don't do in your home there won't be need to come and start pretending and doing it outside because it's still going to expose you so we trying to walk in a place where the lord has not called us to walk is also one of the reasons why god is not using us yet we we need to first of all die to ourselves open our hearts to discern the will of god and let god sincerely train us so that he can hand over if it is the one talent double it to two if it is the five talents he gives you double it to ten work according to the measure of grace given you and family we we'll come to the end of today's video thank you so much for watching who is doing that thing down there and family we we'll come to and family, we'll come to the end of today's video. Thanks so much for watching. Do well to subscribe, like, share, and don't forget to tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. I am going to see you in my next video.